Welcome all fellow wannabes, welcome to the show. You are listening to Game Club from Wannabe Critic Productions. I am one of your hosts, Gabriel Fast, and joining me is another fellow wannabe. Uh, Rex Tucker is joining me for this episode. Rex, how are you feeling? Hey guys, I'm doing good. Good, good. You're always so calm and composed. Today, if you can't tell by the title, we are in fact having a discussion. We are reviewing uh, Little Nightmares, um, a little game from 2017, I believe is whenever it came out. I had a tab, lost it. I'm about to pull it back up. Here we go. Here we go. Clackety clack. Little Nightmares. I want to make sure I have the uh, stuff on it. So it is developed by Tarsier, Tarser, Tarser Studios, um, Engine Software, and Supermassive Games. Uh, publishers are Bandai Namco. Um, Namco, you know, Namco, Bandai Games, America Incorporated, whatever. And I was right. It came out in 2017. Uh, this game was mel- was met with uh, overwhelming support back in 2017. It has really good feedback on Steam. It has a 9 out of 10 on Steam. Um, you know, a lot of people really love this game. And it's worth mentioning that this is actually, I think this is actually a request, too. Um, that we're talking about, uh, you know, from Rex's sister, I believe, which is why Rex is joining uh, on this particular review. But I'm excited to talk about because I remember watching Pewds play this a long time ago and thinking like everyone was saying like, oh, this looks like, uh, you know, like if Tim Burton made a uh, like made a, a horror game. Right. Like if he wanted to make a video game. Um, and so I was super duper excited for it. And I played it like as soon as it came out the first time, beat it, haven't gone back to it since we're doing this review a few years later. Um, Rex, has this your first time playing the game or had you played it before? Um, my sister had played it and I kind of, you know, I played bits and pieces of it and saw her play it a little bit. Um, but that's about it. So this was pretty much my first playthrough. Nice, 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 nice. I'm excited. I didn't see anything of of the ending or anything like that. It was just the beginning. So. Oh, okay. I see. Like, like whenever you would watch her play it, right? Yeah. Now you said you speed ran. You speed ran the game. You beat it in three hours. <laughs> kind of. Wow. Um, I was just. I don't know. I just wanted to like get it done in one play through. Yeah. Uh, I don't just because I know it's kind of short and. My sister was right there, like, kind of helping me out if there was any, like, really hard things. Yeah. Where it just takes a long time for you to try all the things to get the right, you know, item and move it to the right place. And yeah. So I had a little yeah. bit of help. It wasn't like I was just fresh. In the dark. Yeah. Late. Like, you weren't, like, in the dark. Um, it's funny with this game, though. Like, I, I think the aesthetic and, like, the way, it, the way everything looks and the way everything feels is super duper unique, but it does kind of have a similar feeling. I don't know if you've ever played Limbo or Inside. Um, uh, if you played either one of those games from oh, Play Dead, Play Dead is the name of the studio uh, that that yeah. developed that game, and it really reminds me of that. And yeah, I, sorry, go yeah, ahead. no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say it. It really felt um, really similar to Inside, especially for me. Yeah, for um, sure. I, I played that, me and my friend. I kind of watched him play a lot of it and uh, beat it. That, that's another one that's kind of short, but yeah, short and sweet because I really liked that game a lot. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I liked um, I liked both Inside and Limbo both um, just because, you know, they were kind of short and to the point, but they did have some challenging, you know, kind of like a more gothic feel to them and did have some challenging puzzles and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and it was one of those things like the functionality of of those games was always something that I wasn't like quite too crazy about. It's like, God, like these mechanics. I know that there, it's like supposed to induce stress. You know, it's just I feel like it's kind of irritating sometimes to uh, to play this game, you know, and like I'm sure, you know, people are going to iterate are going to iterate off of this genre and, you know, the way this game feels, you know, kind of take like the horror platformer to the next level, you know, and I think in a lot of ways, that's what we got here with Little Nightmares. But it doesn't quite hit the mark for me um, on all on all cylinders. So we're definitely going to talk about it for sure. But before we do, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, you're listening to Game Club from Wannabe Critic Productions. That is brought to you by Patreon.com slash Wannabe Critic. If you want to go check out uh, some of our stuff that we do over there, that would be 
um, that would be grand. That would be amazing. Any, any project that I'm a part of always ends up early over there as soon as it's done. So you have early access to it, you know, and it's, it's good times. Um, also, want to ask that you go ahead and check out the various projects we're working on down in the description down below. There's a few podcast feeds, some other stuff. We have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of things going on for Wanna Be Critic Productions. But, anyways, uh, do you feel comfortable recapping the story? I know I didn't really like prep you for this at all, but like, do you think you could give like a good summation of what's going on in this game? Yeah, I mean. I don't know if we really know what's going on, but uh, yeah, I mean, go ahead. The basics are, you know, you're this little girl in a raincoat and you have like a lighter. Her name's uh, Six. Is her name Six? Yeah, I was I was looking some stuff up. That's the only reason I know. Yeah, I didn't even know that. And uh it's a side scroller. Um story wise, you're just kind of uh lost and there's a lot of kind of bad things happening around you like there's little kids in cages and stuff and um there's i think in the beginning there's like a janitor guy and he's really creepy looking yeah. he has like super long arms and a mask and uh you're just trying to like escape it feels like that's yeah. the vibe in the beginning it's yeah. just like you're yeah. trying to escape and be somewhat stealthy especially when the janitor's around because you know he'll he'll scoop you up and squish you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He just straight up with no remorse. Yeah, and that that's 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 actually you know a pretty general idea of what's going on. Like basically you're just there's a few terms right. So like you're on the ship that called the Maw, and I think you only gather that that's what it's called because of like you know you can read stuff about the lore of the game and stuff like that elsewhere. Um, you're on the Maw and you're basically trying to escape and that's about it. But like you're running into like all of these different like monstrosities of people like the janitor and then you have like the two chefs, the chef twins. And like you mentioned like all of these little kids around you like that are in cages. Like you gather that the janitor is like kind of prepping the kids and like I think the kids go to the janitor that go to the chefs and like I think you get the idea that the chefs are like literally making them into food. And the mall is literally a place where like all of these obese people come and they're eating the food. And I think that's the idea is like all these little kids are being eaten. And it's just I mean, did you gather the same thing or am I crazy? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I will say that I do like the atmosphere of this game. Like they do a good job with the art and the atmosphere. Like it feels really scary and just sketchy and just creepy overall. Yeah. Yeah. I did like that part about it, but it's just yeah, it's there's, really, really weird. It's really weird, and there's a really just like strange air about it. Like right at the very beginning of the game, you walk into a room, and there's just a dude just hanging there. Did you notice that? Like he's just yeah. like like maybe maybe it was just so terrible. Like and I don't know. I think I gather the idea. Like he he saw it was happening, and he just like thought. And he if you look at him, he's super duper thin. So it's like. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't eating the food. Like, maybe he worked on the boat or something like that. He wasn't eating the food. And, like, he just couldn't take it anymore. So, like, he just had to he just had to end it all. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a very, like, ominous and eerie vibe uh, on the Maw. And, yeah, some some messed up things are happening there. And we will we'll, we'll say that there's this is not safe. Like, there's spoilers galore in this, in, this, uh, in, this, in this podcast. So, if you don't want to be spoiled on Little Nightmares, now's your time to, b- to bow out. Um... I I have to ask like what what was your kind of like initial reaction the first time you see the janitor? Cuz I think he is probably the creepiest one out of everybody. Yeah, I I saw him I think back when my my sister was playing it and I wasn't really playing it then but yeah, just really creepy looking like freaky I wouldn't say like super scary, but it, it gives you that like adrenaline rush, you know? Well, yeah, he's just so big, you know, and like six just moves so slow, you know, like you can't really, she can't really do anything, you know, the best thing she can do is outsmart everybody. Um, I have to ask though, whenever you saw him and you kind of knew it was coming, did the charm of the game kind of wear off on you a little bit? Um, I don't think so, not. I don't think so. Not at least not on the 
the janitor for me. Was there anything, okay, because like for me, for instance, whenever I watch PewDiePie play it, of course, like PewDiePie has been like some of the best marketing for a lot of different game developers. Like a lot of people would buy a game just because Pewds is playing it. Um, yeah. I was thinking about it though. I remember watching him play the like the kitchen scene. I remember watching him play the kitchen scene, and I remember being like, "Oh wow, that looks really cool." And then I kind of, I, I kind of was, it, it kind of, like the effect kind of wore off on me a little bit, like just based off of that video. Go ahead. I think the kitchen scene is where it kind of wore off. Like that whole area is where I'm kind of like uh, a little like more weirded out than <laughs> interested. Yeah. And I mean like. And not, I, not really like, oh, this is so weird and disgusting, but it's it just, just felt like it got continuously. Not as scary. Like, yeah. Well, it's just like we get it. It's a horrible place. And like. I don't know, like whenever you see all the shoes, it just felt like it got worse and worse as time. It just like there was no gray, like silver lining. There was no like silver lining in this game at all. Like it's just negative the entire time. Um, yeah. And like, I don't know. And it's hard whenever you don't have dialogue in a game to add anything. Like you're basically just left to kind of surmise your own thoughts, you know, like or infer about what they might have tried to present to you like what the message is of the game you know what i mean but that, that's just kind of like you know skirting around a little bit of what how we feel about the game and like our review overall but i, I did want to ask like did you enjoy the game once you finished it yeah i think it being short you know playing it in one playthrough i think i enjoyed it that way in the same way i, I enjoyed inside um being a one and done you know you get the story and you get the effects you know of the mood being creepy and stuff like that um so i would say i enjoyed it overall um but yeah i do i do see there's you know some issues with it for yeah sure. um i'm just gonna i'm just gonna come out and say it there were things that i did like about the game i don't think there's anything where i'm just like oh i hate this game whatever you know blah blah, blah, blah. that that rarely happens for me i don't like this game um for a, a variety of reasons uh, and it's a, a lot of times like I'll come out of like, for instance, someone asked me like, oh, like, like, let's take Mass Effect who for the first Mass Effect game, for instance, that has a ton of problems, tons of issues. Of course, the legendary editions, you know, coming out or, you know, when it, it'll be out very soon, um, it'll be fixed, whatever. But like, you could go back to the Mass Effect and be like, yeah, there's a bunch of problems, but you should still play this game if you've never played it. You know, it's kind of how I feel. I feel like this kind of, this certain game has an icon to it, you know, has an iconic feel to it. But at the end of this game, I don't ever feel like I have to play this game again. Like, or that I would even recommend to other people. It's like, oh, dude, you haven't played that? Like, you have to play it. Like, you gotta play Little Nightmares if you haven't played it. You know, it doesn't have that air about it to me. Like, that, do you do you do you, do you do you pick up when I'm laying down? Can you piggyback off that at all? Yeah, I think. You're right. It's not a game you really play twice unless you're a big fan and you're trying to figure out lore things because there is Easter eggs and little bits and pieces you can pick up um, in the game that kind of add to the lore and story or background of the game. That's not really, you know, they haven't really come out and described everything that's actually happening in this world. Yeah. So for me, it's definitely a, a once playthrough type of game. And I, I feel that way about Inside, too. Yeah, um, same. It's the same thing. It's like, yeah, if you're bored and you want a, a unique experience, somewhat unique, like kind of cool, um, or just be creeped out, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I might recommend, you know, these types of games. And I didn't play Limbo, so I can't really speak from speak much for that one um but i know inside was kind of creepy with the ending and yeah well and that's the thing too is like i honestly i genuinely think that limbo is the best one out of all three of these games like oh, okay I, like if you liked little parts of little nightmares and you liked things about inside i think limbo literally is the perfect game out of all three of those like if, if anyone came to me and was like hey like what game do you recommend that's like not super scary but kind of creepy limbo would be the first choice like um, just because, 
I don't know. You should that that'd be a fun one to talk about next time on Game Club, maybe potentially. Other than Little yeah, Nightmares too. It's more of a story for me, and like it leaves it open. It's mysterious, and you know, there's fans that are into this kind of genre, and um, they want to know more about what's happening. You know? Yeah, for sure. Well, and I don't know. Like Little Nightmares just seems like the type of thing that could benefit from having like a comic series or just like a short, a short dark horse run explaining some stuff. Because that was, that's one of my biggest gripes about the game. Honestly, is that there just isn't really any exposition or anything. It's just all left to your imagination. And that'd be fine if if it was an RPG, but it's not. It's a linear, you know, platformer, um, horror platformer, and that's fine. Like, the goal is escape. That's it. I understand. But I want to know more. So before we get into our negatives, though, I want to talk about the things that we genuinely do like. Go ahead, Rex. Um, well, I was going to say something negative, but I'll wait. But Yeah. Well, I want to I wanna get the positive things out of the, you know, I want to get the things that we do like. Cause I'm, I'm sure it's probably similar, you know, the things that we do like. Um, yeah. so you go first, like what you, you kind of talked about the aesthetic, you know, and the feeling of the game. Well, what else, like, what else do you like about this game? Yeah, I think I, I think most of it is like what I said, like the atmosphere, um, you know, there's a creepy aspect to it and, um, uh, the story behind it all is, is kind of interesting and weird. And I, I think that's intriguing to some people. And um, I would say the art is probably my biggest uh, plus for me. Yeah, I think, just to, just to agree with you, because I'm pretty much on the same page. Like, the atmosphere is unique. The art is unique. Like, the claymation style is, you know, like, it's, it's, very, it's very intricate. It's very, it's very good looking. Um, I like the way, like, whenever you feel like you should be sneaking around, like, the first time you encounter the janitor. Of course, I'm playing on PlayStation. So the first time I encounter the, the janitor, like, my controller's pulsing, you know, because I should be quiet. And it's like, oh, this is, this, is, this is a moment, you know what I mean? Like, it really good. It's, it does a pretty good job of making that, that moment feel very, like, imprinting. Like, the janitor, to me, is the best character in the game, like, in terms of, like, creepiness. Go ahead. I don't know. I thought the last lady was kind of creepy, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like the end, like with the geisha, she, we get the idea, like she's kind of the one that is overlooking everything, you know, and she's memorable for sure. And of course, like, you know, you steal her powers at the end and you know, it's like, what's all, what's all that about? You know what I mean? Like, um, we never had like an, we never had a notion of like telekinetic abilities. Like, so it just kind of felt like they dropped that on us at the last minute but, you know, the janitor fo- follows you f- through almost half the game, like, for That's a good true, yeah. for a good portion of the game. So to me, it was like, he really, I was scared of him. Like, that genuinely made me feel like Resident Evil, in a way, to where... More you, they, epic, like, battle, too. Like, yeah, last long. yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, I, I think he's my favorite part. He's just a really unique bad guy, you know, with the long arms, and it's like, who thinks of something like that? Um, so I, I liked him. Uh, but other than that, I just don't have a ton of positive things to say about it. I mean, uh, because they're, it's all surface, it's all surface level. That's what this game is in a nutshell. It's surface level. It's surface level thrills, surface level looks. Go ahead, Rex. I think the design aspect of how they direct you through the game is really good too. I would say that's another positive. Yeah, I think the Maw is really cool. I I think the Maw itself and the idea of how big it is and how small you are is really, really cool. That being said, that's about all the positives I have to say about the game, and that's a good segue into the negatives. This game is so clunky. It is so hard to be six and, like, run around as this... Like, they really want you to feel... If I had a dollar for every time I died doing something stupid, like by accident. If I had a dollar for every time I died by accident, I could probably buy lunch for like a week. Literally I died so much. And then it's like, you just get punished. You get punished repeatedly for dying. It's like load screen after load screen. 
that was frustrating, especially whenever the most frustrating thing is when, when you know you see a puzzle and you're like, oh, I know that like, this connects to this and I should do this. And like, oh, now the power's off and I got to slip through here because the power's off. And like, oh, I keep getting eaten, I keep getting eaten by these things. I can turn my light around. Oh, OK, cool. I can maneuver now. Like, but not being able to do it because like for a split second, like out of two frames, like you, you're two frames late, basically. That's frustrating, and that is where this game seriously suffers for me. That's like my biggest complaint about this game, is that it is just, for lack of a better word, it is not fun. Like, it is not fun. It's not fun to play a six. Like, literally, I, you were able to sit down and be able to beat it in one go through. The first time I played this game, I just could not sit down and play it continuously because it it was so... <sighs> It was just a slog. It just felt like a slog to get through, you know, especially since I'm not really that good at video games, you know? Um, I don't know. It's just It was just frustrating. Can you speak to any of that? Yeah, I think the clunkiness is somewhat a result of the art style they're going for and the more, um, the more like, free-flowing, like, they want the characters to be moving, um, I forgot what it's called, but you know, their limbs are like all moving. And oh, like a ragdoll type thing? Ragdolly, yeah. yeah. I think it has that type of physics built into it. And I think it's partly maybe because of the art style um, and how they wanted it to look. And that's probably why they went with some of that. But I agree, it's, it feels clunky. And a lot of the times you don't know which buttons to press, especially yeah. in the beginning. Um, so it's kind of like a figure it out yourself type of thing, you know, Yeah. and not everyone likes that. And um, although they do direct you in which way to go with like lighting and, you know, in subtle ways, it's still they kind of leave it open um, and you don't always have that direction. And um, it it is trying to be a puzzle game, but the puzzles to me aren't good. Yeah, like they're not they don't really make you think too hard. Yeah. And I feel like that kind of, I was like, eh, it just made like passing the levels. Just, it didn't seem hard. Or it just seemed like a pain, you know? Yeah. It just seemed like a chore. Right. And yeah. I mean, puzzles are always going to feel like a chore, but usually there's some level of satisfaction, you know, of like, Oh sweet. Like I got through that. This just feels like a chore, and it's like, oh, if you mess up, you better be careful, because if you mess up, you're going to have to do the whole thing over again, like, because it's so easy to die as six. It's like, oh, don't jump from too high, because you'll die. That was the big, like, God, so many things where, and I, I get what they were going with, it felt like, it felt like the atmospheres were really, really focused on and really, really fleshed out, but the gameplay was still in beta is what it felt like to me. Um, and I get it. You know, there's a sequel out. Like I said, people love this game. There's a sequel out, which we're going to review, you know, um, in the coming weeks. We should have a Cammy on for that one because she's like a super fan. Oh, Cammy. Cam oh, Cammy's a super fan. No, because she'll, she'll just be like not she'll, – she'll just won't listen to our gripes. And she'll be like, yeah, but man, that's the point. Like it's like people who try and argue that like – uh, Dark Souls, you know what I mean? Like, people say, like, Dark Souls, oh, you just don't get it. Like, get good, you know what I mean? It's just so niche, you know? And it's like, no, there's flaws here. See the flaws? Smack, 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 you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of on the Souls bandwagon. Shut stuff. up, Rex. Um, <laughs> anyways, no, I... I, I well, it, here, well, it you, you good to get, hear her side of it, you know? Yeah, especially after she hears this, too. Um... Because I'm not, I don't want to seem like I'm hating on the game, but like, I kind of am. Like, it's not fun. Like, the the atmosphere and the, the feeling the game gives you and like the rush of being caught by something, I think that's kind of like across the board, like that gives us an adrenaline rush. It wears off after like four or five times. It's like, okay, like, I'm sick of this now. Like, I actually want to progress. I, I'm sick of being stuck in this thing. I want to be able to progress. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. It does wear off and you're not really scared halfway through. Um, towards the end, there's a little bit more scary parts. I think it's pretty funny when yeah, all the morbidly obese people start shooting. <laughs> yeah. It was more hilarious than, than scary at that point. Yeah. It was a little shocking at first, especially when that one part where you like, 
the door opens and it's just like mountains of them yeah. chasing you. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a cool scene too. Like as you're running away, you know, and right, I, I did like that part. Um, yeah, that was probably one of my favorite parts, along with the janitor where you're escaping him. Yeah, um, same. Those are like my two okay. key moments of like, okay, like you have some dark humor. Yeah, there's uh, that's the thing is I think they're trying to make like eating kid like little kids or like whatever. I don't know if they're little kids or the, it's like a it's not actually little kids. It's like you know, they're just young beings. It kind of reminds me of like Spirited Away a little bit. Like you, you, you don't really get the, I mean, I don't know. I don't feel like it's actually real people. Do you? I mean, they're like creatures of some sort. It's weird because they look weird and it, it looks like they have masks on. Kind yeah. Of. Like they're like caricatures of real people. Maybe they're like, maybe they're like aliens, like pretending to be people. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe we'll probably know more. You touched on something. I was I was going with this earlier. You touched on something before about the plot, like the world being interesting. So whenever I saw Little Nightmares two, I was like, oh, maybe this will grab me more, and maybe we'll get some payoff from the things that happened in the first game. Like maybe we'll get kind of a resolution right. and like kind of get some resolve by the end of the second game. So like I am excited to go through it and to play it. But this first game, go ahead. Oh, I forgot another scene I really liked is when you're climbing on the side of the boat and it's like zooms out. Oh, yeah. And you see like your environment. I thought that was a really cool scene. Yeah. Yeah. that was, it, it was cool. It kind of had like, it reminds me of that movie Rango a little bit. Um, yeah. Like, and the, the, like, like we said, the environments are gorgeous. Like the environments are the best part of the game for sure. Um. But yeah, just like navigating the Maw as six, it's just not fun. And I, I think that was kind of the intent. It was to make you feel inadequate or, you know, it meant, was meant to make you feel weak and, you know, like you shouldn't be able to escape really, but you do. How did, how did you feel when she ate the little gnome guy? <laughs> oh God. Yeah. That was, <laughs> she just like, she's all, yeah. You know, she just goes for him and he's all like, you could see his arms like wriggling, like in the back. That was messed up. That was another thing too, is like by the end of it, like we get the idea, like she's supposed to be like this sweet little girl. That's like trying to like escape. But by the end of it, she's a freaking psychopath. And I guess like maybe the message is your result. You're a result of your environment. Um, and you can see her like, She's not concerned with saving any of the other little kids that are in the cages. Like she doesn't care about them. Yeah. She like even just she even uses one of them as like a pedestal to like get herself to the next place. She's not worried about saving saving those other kids. I think it would have been cool if maybe they added that where she is the good person trying to save the kids. Yeah, but, that would have been much more fun. Like that would have yeah. been that would have given me more purpose other than I'm just trying to escape because by the end of it Usually you should feel a sense of satisfaction. I, I legitimately feel like I had wasted time after I beat this game. Um, yeah, and then, and then maybe you're scared of, like, you know, those little kids dying because they're coming along with you. Like, it could have added another element, um, and it may, maybe integrated that into the puzzles somehow. Well, um, yeah, and I think that's what... Like how inside did. Yeah, well, and I think that's what they're trying to do in the second one because there's two people. There's two characters in the second game. I think she's trying to help someone else escape. Um, in the second game. So, you know, per, like maybe and that's, that's the thing is I don't want to be too like hell bent on like griping about everything because they could be fixing a lot of stuff, you know, in the next game. I, I don't know. I don't know for sure. I'm, I'm not a fortune teller. You know what I mean? I need to play the game. Um, but yeah, I think the issues here for the most part, I hate to say it. I think this game is overrated across the board. Um, but I don't really have, uh, gee, I wish there was more to talk about, but there's just no substance. Go ahead. Will you say you're somewhat interested in it, though? Yeah. Well, that's the thing is I, I want to see how they're going to incorporate another character. And I want I was I was I was happy that she like the only good thing about this game is that she like the only good story beat is that she escapes the mob. But now she's like plagued with these powers because she kills the geisha and like starts eating the geisha, like takes a bite out of the geisha. Cause she, you know, you know, the whole, the whole game six has like this debilitating, like hunger to where she can't progress unless she eats something. So she eats the kid. And then like, I don't know, as she progressively is consuming the food there, 
you know, I think that that's what they're, I think that's, like I said before, I think that's the idea they're trying to perpetuate is that that place is bad. It, the more you partake of that place, like the worse person you become. You know, which would make sense if we saw that guy that had hung himself in the beginning. Like, he wasn't eating the food. He wasn't doing anything. He couldn't take it anymore. Um, so it would be interesting to see in the second game if she comes out of that situation having kind of a chip on her shoulder with those powers and still being able to, like, have positivity and, like, do something for the greater good by trying to save someone else. Um, so that that's what I'm interested in seeing, you know. Uh, but... Other than that, I don't really have too much else to say, to be honest. So, what yeah, about you? I'm I'm somewhat interested in seeing where they go with it, and maybe, you know, they'll put more clues and kind of explain what's going on. I would like that. Um, the gameplay just it's not too fun, like you said. It's it's just whatever. You're not. It's not a game you're gonna play for the gameplay and the mechanics. Yeah. And, for the puzzles like this is a fun. yeah this is like this is a this is a game for cheap thrills and a few a few uh you know like jump scares basically but that's about it that's about all you're getting so um wow that was like the most concise review i think we've ever done honestly uh do you want to score this bad boy uh yeah sure i haven't hadn't even thought of a score man um you want to go first yeah so i, I think this really pushed the limits of what not not the limits, but I really think it 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 put a nice addition. It was a nice addition to you know what the current gen of games could do at that time in 2017, and I think for the way it looks, it was pretty unique. Um, which that's a factor that you can't deny. It, it looked really good. I think the way the game makes you feel hits about half the time. Like with the janitor, that was like the best part of the game to me up up until his demise. Um, I asked, I found myself asking more questions, and the worst thing ever is whenever you ask questions that you don't get answers to. Like the chefs, you escape the chefs, you escape the obese people, you kill the geisha and absorb her powers. She had powers, like okay, was her influence what was making people crazy on the maw? I want to know. I, it was the worst feeling ever of like, okay, I have these girls' powers now, and yeah, I escaped the mob, but now what? You know, and then they ended it. Right. But with no exposition, no no explaining anything and just left to it, I, I didn't care enough by the end of it, and I was more frustrated than anything. So while I really want to give this game like a 7, a 6, I'm going 6 out of 10. It just, it's not fun. Um, I would I'm say... Surprised. It a six, honestly. Yeah, I would say it's a six for me. Like I said, the atmosphere that that's impressive. I mean, there's there's things about the game that are really really impressive. I'm not I'm not right. going to deny that. And there are some clever there are some clever puzzles and some clever things and like oh that's kind of clever, right? But at the same time, it's nothing like so groundbreaking or that I haven't seen elsewhere um, before in terms of mechanics. So yeah, I think. It's it's average. It's an average experience. I think you nailed it. Um, I'm the same. I have the same thoughts, and I'm gonna give it a six as well, just because I think during the time too, um, indie games were kind of coming up and getting more popular, and I think it's good for the genre of indie games and giving them, you know some sort of platform and getting them giving them some recognition because there are good indie games out there and um i think around the time this came out there wasn't a ton of great games that i wanted to play and i think that's it had like just the right moment to kind of shine a bit and get the the notice that it needed to really kind of get out there but um Overall, I think you just nailed it on the head. Like, it doesn't give you enough answers, and it's really clunky um, and not as fun as you want it to be. The vibe that it's kind of putting out there wears off really early on, and you're just left not really scared and just left with questions. Too many questions, I think. 
Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. And you really nailed something on the head too. Like there was a time period between 2015 to now even really where indie games kind of had this like resurgence, like this huge wave of publicity. And now we're finding like, we're kind of talking about these like, they're not quite an indie game, but they're not quite AAA, like they're double A games. And I don't think Little Nightmares really hit that. I think it's definitely an indie game. Um, but I do think we live in a time now where we're going to start seeing more and more of these double A titles that just don't quite hit the triple A mark. Like, for instance, I think of a game like It Takes Two. You know, everything I've heard about that game, it's like, it's incredible. Uh, you know, there's all these things into it. It doesn't, it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite hit the triple A marker, but it still feels like next gen. Like it's a next gen double A experience. Um, Even like um, Hades, right? It's yeah. kind of. It's not fully. It's not something you think of as a full-on, full-fledged game. All, although it almost should be because it's that good. Yeah. No, that's a really good way to put it. And um, y- yeah. I mean, I, I just I even think about like what makes an indie game so good is whether or not it ages well or not. Super Giant is a great example of games that those games are like timeless. You can go back to them at any time, and they feel fresh. They feel good. Um, this just this the the age here. At least on PlayStation, it really shows um, for me personally. So I'm, I'm going 6 out of 10, and it's nice to know that you have a 6 out of 10 because that's the official uh, wannabe score um, for Little Nightmares. But we are going to be covering Little Nightmares 2 in the coming weeks. Um, so we might have more to say about it. We might, we, might, we might give that game a completely different score, like a more positive score. Maybe we give that game a 9 out of 10. Who knows? But you'll just have to tune in next time because that is what's going to happen. That's how you're going to be able to continue it. Did you know that there was DLC for this game, Rex Tucker? No. <laughs> so, fun fact, spoiler for the DLC for uh, uh, Little Nightmares. Um, you play as a young man who is also trying to escape them all. He's doing the exact same thing Six is. But by the end of it, he sees the geisha for what she really is. The geisha's got like a messed up face kind of in a similar vein as like the chefs and, you know, the janitor. Well, she turns him into one of those little gnomey things. And guess what? He's the gnome that you eat. <laughs> you go through the entire DLC, and then it ends, and then you get eaten by six by the end of it. Um, so, yeah. Wow. That's, fun fact. Um, that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it kind of would have been interesting to if, if I would have you know been thinking of it. I didn't even know there was a DLC until... Um, you know, I didn't even know that there was DLC until uh, a different time. But uh, anyways, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens, especially knowing that it'll be more interesting to see what um, it'd be more interesting to see what Little Nightmares 2 looks like in the future, you know, and see kind of how that story be is like, what, is she going to eat him too at the end of it? I don't know. We'll see. But either way, Rex, do you have anything else that you want to say? No, I think we covered it, man. It's just, uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Game Club from Wannabe Critic Productions. Rex, I just want to thank you so much for giving your time to go through this game. Giving, you know, not only, not only playing the game, but talking about it as well for, you know, the past 38 eight or nine minutes or so whatever the past 40 minutes. If you have a suggestion of something that you would like to hear us cover, not me and Rex specifically, but you want to hear Wannabe Critic Productions tackle a specific subject, a specific game, I would recommend that you email us at geeklybiweekly1 at gmail.com. You can hit us up on Twitter. You can hit us pretty much up on any all the socials. Uh, I, you can message me even, the underscore wannabe critic, because, you know, for all intents and purposes, I, you know, I run Wannabe Critic Productions. I kind of pull the strings and, and do all the different stuff. So basically, you're going to be letting me know either way if you want us to hear a game. Now, if you want to hear us talk about a game, if you for sure want to hear us talk about a game, though, the best thing to do is go over to patreon.com slash wannabe critic to put in your request and it will you will be ensured that whatever you want to talk about whatever you want us to talk about uh will be covered on an episode of game club except it can't be an m game and you know of course it has to be screened by by yours truly first you know before we actually get into it but that's the best way if you want to hear us tackle a game for sure 
Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for preparing yourselves for a plethora of hot takes and potentially unpopular opinions. Um, Rex, say goodbye. Goodbye.